So the question here is foramen that passes through the greater wing of below bone are all except. Now here if we just try to identify this uh, whole bone, this looks like a bat with outstretched wing. Or we can say, see, it looks like a butterfly. Okay, butterfly shaped bone is there, and this particular bone is none other than your sphenoid bone. So, in your exam, they generally ask bat with outstretched wing or the butterfly uh, shaped bone is going to be your sphenoid bone. Now, this particular bone, the sphenoid bone, is generally, of course, a uh, butterfly fly shaped bone, and it contains two wings. One is your lesser wing and another is your greater wing. So, there will be lesser wing of this phenoid and the greater wing of this phenoid. Now, the lesser wing of this phenoid is present at the floor of at the floor of anterior cranial fossa. So, when you see from the superior view, you will be seeing that this lesser wing is forming the floor of the anterior cranial fossa and the greater wing is forming the floor of your middle cranial fossa okay so we'll be seeing this particular bone with a different perspective so that we can solve most of our mcqs which can come in exam and you don't have to remember a lot of things you will be understanding everything now there is something known as superior orbital fissure now the superior orbital fissure is generally seen between the lesser and greater wing of the sphenoid greater wing of the sphenoid Another very important thing that the body of this sphenoid bone, body of this sphenoid bone is going to present in all the three cranial fossa that is anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa and it will be present in the posterior cranial fossa also. So, the body of sphenoid will be seen in all forming a part of at least uh, some part of anterior, posterior and middle cranial fossa. So, this is a basic thing which we have understood. Now, let's see the anterior part of the brain or the anterior cranial fossa of the brain. So, if you see from here up till here, you will be seeing the anterior cranial fossa and you will be able to appreciate in the anterior cranial fossa, first thing that you can notice here is going to be your cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, okay. And that is going to form the roof of nasal cavity. And the second thing, uh, important thing about this cribriform plate that will be giving the passage of the olfactory nerve axons, they will be going to the uh, uh, nose through the olfactory bulb in the brain. So, they will be, it will be generally giving the passage to the olfactory nerve which are important for sense that we have to remember. Now, the second thing which we see here, this area is going to form the roof of the orbit, okay, here you will be seeing the roof of orbit. Now, this roof of orbit is formed by two bones. One is going to be your frontal bone and another is going to be your lesser wing of sphenoid. So, we have already discussed that it is seen in the lesser wing, is seen in the anterior cranial fossa and if you try to appreciate this whole structure, this is going to be the superior aspect of the lesser wing of sphenoid and here you will be seeing in the lesser wing of the sphenoid what you will be noticing there will be an optic canal okay you will be noticing an optic canal and this optic canal gives passage to the optic nerve that goes from the eye bowl okay that nerve is coming from the eye bowl and it goes to the brain of course so, the optic nerve will be uh, passed through the optic canal that is present in the lesser wing of sphenoid. So, that is very important. You have to remember this. So, this is about the sphenoid bone and how it is related in the anterior cranial fossa. Now, as we know, the superior wing is located in the, the greater wing actually. Greater wing is located as the uh, floor of the middle cranial fossa. So, we will see the middle cranial fossa here. So, this is going to be the middle cranial fossa and if we just try to outline our greater wing of the sphenoid bone, so it would be here, it would be just like this, okay. So, this is going to be the greater wing of your sphenoid bone and as we know, the greater wing of the sphenoid bone which is present in the uh, middle cranial fossa 
so greater wing of sphenoid bone is going to have three important openings which are asked in exam so what are the openings which are seen in this you can remember that by a simple name r o s rose okay r stand for rotundum so foramen rotundum then you have foramen ovale and then you will have foramen spinosum so these are the three openings that are from the anterior to the posterior aspect of the middle cranial fossa or you can see these are present in the superior uh, uh, sorry the greater wing of your sphenoid okay so here this is going to be your foramen rotundum this is going to be your foramen ovale and the third one foramen spinosum will be this one okay so from here you can try to understand the three foramen which are seen and we have already discussed that the there is a fissure that is known as the superior orbital fissure so this area or the this area the superior orbital fissure which is seen between the two wings of the sphenoid bone this is going to be the lesser wing of sphenoid and this is going to be the greater wing of the sphenoid so between these two you will be seeing the superior orbital fissure okay till here we are clear and this is seen in the middle cranial fossa superior orbital fissure is said to be present in the middle cranial fossa as we have already talked about the body of sphenoid so we have talked that the body of sphenoid now it is going to form it is going to present in all the three fossa anterior posterior and middle okay that is something and very important thing there is a uh, you know depression here that is known as the sella tarsica now this sella tarsica that is present in the body of the sphenoid in floor of middle cranial fossa and the function of this is to keep or to give a uh, uh, housing to the pituitary gland so you will be seeing the pituitary gland or the cellular cecica will be seen in the body of your sphenoid okay it is not seen in the wings of the sphenoid it will be seen in the body of the sphenoid here and that is going to house the pituitary gland so till here the things should be clear how you can differentiate the uh, sphenoid bone and at the same time how you can correlate with it, the anterior cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa so uh, if we just try to see the bone as a whole so here you will be seeing the bone and this is going to be the greater wing of your sphenoid and this is going to be the lesser wing of your sphenoid okay so this is going to be the lesser wing and this is going to be the greater wing of the sphenoid if you see here you will be able to identify the three foramen from anterior to the posterior aspect so r is going to be your rotundum then here o is going to be your ovale and s is going to be your foramen spinosum okay so these are the three things which we have to remember here to understand uh, the different uh, openings which are present in this and yes here you will be having your cell at alsica and here in these two depressions you will be seeing the cavernous sinus so that is very important this is going to form the cavernous sinus so that is very important to understand so and this particular roof is known as the tuberculum cellae so these are the important uh, labeling of the sphenoid bone which we have to understand while dealing with the exams now again if we try to see it from the anterior aspect so uh, if we have just taken the anterior aspect of the sphenoid bone so we would have been seeing that it is forming the uh, orbital uh, a part of the orbit actually orbit uh, cavity so here if you just directly see the anterior aspect here so you will be appreciating that there will be uh, two pterygoid plates that would be coming from here so the pterygoid processes so the this one is going to be your medial plate and this one is going to be your lateral plate from anterior aspect you will be able to identify the foramen rotundum so there will be 
four hundred men wrote under. Okay, then if you just try to understand that what is important here actually, so there is lesser wing. So this is going to be the lesser wing from the anterior aspect. This is going to be the lesser wing of the sphenoid, and this hole is going to be the greater wing of the sphenoid. So that is the greater wing. And now you will be able to understand that this area of the greater wing, when seen from the anterior aspect, is going to form the surface of the orbit. So that is going to form a part of the orbit, and that is known as the orbital surface of a sphenoid. Okay. As this bone also houses a pair of sinus, and these pairs are known as the sphenoidal sinus. So these are the sphenoidal sinuses. We have already discussed there is a fissure between the greater wing and lesser wing. So if you just try to see this fissure, is going to be between the lesser wing. This is the lesser wing, and this is the greater wing. So that is going to be your superior orbital fissure. So these are the important labelings which you have to remember about this particular bone in uh, you know for your exam. Uh, since the thing of your uh, orbit has come, so we'll just uh, try to uh, conclude the whole discussion here by just discussing the boundaries of the orbit. So if we just talk about the boundaries of orbit here, so we should know the roof of this particular orbit is going to form by the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Lesser wing of sphenoid. We have already seen that actually. So two bones are forming the roof of the orbit. One is your frontal bone, and another is your lesser wing of the sphenoid. The second important thing: the lateral wall. Lateral wall is formed by your greater wing. of sphenoid even the medial wall of your orbit is going to be formed by the body of sphenoid okay so these are very important uh, facts which we have to remember about this particular bone so uh, if we just quickly walk through the explanation given here so the sphenoid bone is sphenoid pet with outstretched wing that is something a body is there in the center two lesser wings are going to be there two greater wings are going to be there and two pterygoid wing like processes will be there that will be uh, coming out of this so if we just talk about the pterygoid processes so there will be uh, medial surface of the pterygoid plate and there will be lateral surface of your pterygoid plate so to the medial surface a muscle called medial pterygoid is attached and lateral surface a muscle called lateral pterygoid is attached okay so this is something that is important about the pterygoid plate then uh, if you just uh, see the body of the sphenoid okay so it will be giving housing to the sphenoidal air sinuses as well then you'll see the greater wings so these are two strong processes that are curved upward from the side of the body okay on the cerebral surface if you see it will be forming the floor of middle cranial fossa okay and it will be giving three major openings foramen rotundum ovale and spinosum although it's uh, emissary sphenoidal foramen can also be there but it's not generally asked in the exam then you see the lesser wing of the sphenoid a base will be there that will be forming the medial end of the wing and it is connected to the body by two roots which enclose the optic canal so basically it will be containing the optic canal that is important for your exam then comes your pterygoid process yes we have already discussed about pterygoid process uh, each side there will be downward growth from the junction of the body okay and that these pterygoid process are going to do the attachment to the pterygoid muscle so on the medial surface you'll get the medial pterygoid muscle and on the uh, lateral surface you will get the lateral pterygoid muscle so if you go back to the question and try to see the uh, four options here so first is rotundum foramen rotundum will have spinosum then will have ovale now these three r o s from 
the anterior to posterior if you see the uh, sequencing also so ro rotunda ovale and spinosum will be seen in the greater wing of the sphenoid by the optic canal is seen in the lesser wing of the sphenoid so answer to this is going to be your fourth which is seen in the lesser wing of the sphenoid not the greater wing of the sphenoid so answer is four